extremely energetic stream of cosmic rays hit the Earth using the telescope array. Scientists detected an ultra-high energy cosmic ray particle. It is the second most energetic cosmic ray particle ever detected. Scientists named it Amaterasu, after the Japanese sun goddess. However, they do not know what could have been its source. An ultra-high energy particle was observed in cosmic rays that hit the atmosphere on May 27, 2021, showering the telescope array detector with secondary particles. This observatory consists of 507 surface detectors distributed over an area of 700 square kilometers in Utah, USA. Amaterasu had over 240 exa electron volts of energy. Second only to a cosmic ray stream recorded in 1991, which discovered the Oh My God particle having 340 exa electron volts of energy, EEV. The results of the observations were published in the journal, Science. Since the Oh My God particle was recorded, more than 30 ultra-high energy jets have been observed coming from space, although none have reached this energy level. The 1991 detection itself shocked astrophysicists. The particle had more energy than was theoretically possible for cosmic rays reaching Earth from other galaxies. Scientists couldn't say what its source was. Anyway, they still can't. In short, the particle should not exist. And yet it was registered. Cosmic rays are echoes of violent events in space that stripped matter down to its subatomic structures and hurled it through the universe at nearly the speed of light. These are nothing more than particles with a wide energy range consisting of positive protons, negative electrons or entire atomic nuclei that travel through space and almost constantly hit the Earth. Those with extremely high energy are extremely rare. They carry millions of times more energy than can be achieved by the most powerful man-made particle accelerators. Toshihiro Fuji, an astronomer at Osaka Metropolitan University in Japan, came across Amaterasu during a routine inspection of data collected by the telescope array. The signals suggested that the detectors had been flooded with something super energetic. When I first discovered this ultra-high energy cosmic ray, I thought there had been a mistake because it showed energy levels not seen in the last three decades, Professor Fuji said. But the measurement turned out to be correct. Fuji and his team tried to locate the source of this energetic pulse, but were unsuccessful. Ultra-high energy cosmic rays usually travel relatively smoothly through space. They are not affected as much by magnetic fields as those with lower energy levels. This should make it easier to pinpoint the stellar explosion, black hole or galaxy where the pulse came from. Calculations indicated that the source of the energy stream is located in the local void. It is a relatively empty area of space bordering the Milky Way extending for approximately 30 to 150 million light years. These particles have such high energy that galactic and extragalactic magnetic fields should not affect them. Therefore, it should be easy to pinpoint where they come from, said John Matthews of the University of Utah, co-author of the study. But in the case of the Oh My God particle and this new particle, you trace its trajectory to the source, and there is nothing there to produce it. Things that people think of as energetic, like a supernova, are not energetic enough for that. 
huge amounts of energy and really strong magnetic fields are needed, he added. It looks like these events are coming from completely different places in the sky. It's not like there's one mysterious source, said John Bells of the University of Utah, co-author of the study. These may include defects in the structure of space-time. We come up with all sorts of crazy ideas because there is no conventional explanation, he added. One explanation may be that models estimating the influence of magnetic fields on the path of cosmic rays are incorrect and may require some corrections. In this case, it is possible that Amaterasu came from a different direction than the team's calculations suggest. We think we have a good estimate, but we may be wrong, said Clancy James. An astronomer at Curtin University in Perth, Australia. There is one more explanation. A team of researchers described the ultra-high energy cosmic ray assessed its characteristics and concluded that these rare phenomena may result from elementary particle physics unknown to science. In other words, ultra-high energy cosmic rays may be produced by unknown physical processes. These, in turn, may enable them to travel much greater distances than previously thought. This could be new physics said Bellido Cáceres from the Pierre Auger Observatory in Malague, Argentina. He also added that cosmic rays provide a testing ground for studying particle interactions at extreme energies that cannot be produced by accelerators on Earth. No promising astronomical object has been identified corresponding to the direction from which the cosmic ray came suggesting the possibility of unknown astronomical phenomena and new physics beyond the standard model, emphasized Professor Fuji. Did dinosaurs influence human lifespan? The dominance of dinosaurs millions of years ago may have had an impact on the aging processes of mammals, including humans. One of the researchers from the University of Birmingham presented an interesting concept. According to her, mammals, even during the reign of dinosaurs, were at the very bottom of the food chain. They have developed the ability to reproduce quickly in order to survive. However, this pressure over more than 100 million years has led to the loss or inactivation of longevity genes responsible for processes related to tissue regeneration and DNA repair. The author of this concept is Professor João Pedro de Magalhães from the University of Birmingham. He called it the longevity bottleneck hypothesis. This hypothesis, details of which were published in the journal Bioessays, links the role that dinosaurs played for over 100 million years with the aging process of mammals. The concept can be summarized in a few sentences. When dinosaurs ruled the Earth, much smaller mammals had to be able to reproduce quickly in order to simply survive. Therefore, genes ensuring longer lifespan have been lost or inactivated as evolution progressed. Some of the earliest mammals were forced to live at the bottom of the food chain and spend millions of years during the age of dinosaurs. Evolving to survive by reproducing rapidly, says de Magalhães. This long period of evolutionary pressure, in my opinion, has an impact on the way we age, he emphasizes. According to the author, this hypothesis may shed more light on the evolutionary forces that have shaped mammalian aging processes for millions of years.
Although humans live relatively long lives compared to other species, there are many reptiles and other animals whose aging processes are much slower. These species show minimal signs of aging throughout their lives. The published work noted that our ancient ancestors lost certain enzymes, the so-called photoliases that repair damage caused by ultraviolet light. We lack at least one of the three enzymes that repair the damage caused by UV radiation. It's hard to say whether this has anything to do with the shortened lifespan. Perhaps the loss of this enzyme resulted from mammals becoming nocturnal to stay safe. Millions of years later, we make up for it with sunscreen. The publication also provides other examples, such as teeth. Some reptiles, including alligators, can grow teeth throughout their lives. People don't. Perhaps this happened as a result of genetic selection dating back hundreds of millennia. We see examples of truly extraordinary repair and regeneration in the animal world. This genetic information would have been unnecessary for early mammals, which were lucky not to end up as food for T. rex. Although we now have plenty of mammals, including humans, whales and elephants, that grow large and live long. We and these mammals live with the genetic limitations of the Mesozoic era and age much faster than many reptiles, de Magalhaes points out. A better understanding of the factors behind aging could prove useful in the fight against age-related diseases, including dementia and stroke. And the genetics behind the longevity bottleneck may teach us more. Although it is only a hypothesis at this point, it can be taken from many intriguing angles. Including the perspective that cancer is more common in mammals than in other species due to our evolutionary history, de Magalhaes pointed out.